Hi everyone, I'm Tal, I'm the Chief Data Scientist in Anaplan, um, and I'll be talking with you today about how to uh, create uh, something from almost nothing, uh, basically using very little uh, tagging uh, to create uh, effective NLP topic models. So first, briefly about uh, Anaplan. Anaplan is a global uh, company, publicly traded US company. Um, we are basically an operating system for enterprises. So Anaplan compiles all the data and combines it from all the different sources in the organization, uh, sales data, financial data, supply chain data, HR data. And on that data, it's able to apply uh, intelligence models that basically combine uh, the knowledge extracted from all these different areas, and it's able to uh, drive decisions and uh, build uh, plans, what if scenarios, for almost any action taken in the company. Um, now, of course, such an engine needs a lot of external data and AI, and this is where Anaplan Israel comes into play. We are the data science center uh, for Anaplan as a company. Uh, we are the result of an acquisition of an Israeli startup. Uh, what we did before was uh, sales and marketing uh, AI. Uh, we have over 20, close to 20,000 uh, models uh, built in our production environment, uh, hundreds of customers using us. Um, and uh, to do that, we need to uh, uh, curate a lot of uh, B2B uh, uh, relevant company data from uh, web sources. Um, and that's what I'll be talking about today. Um, so basically, um, what we have at the input is a lot of events coming from all kinds of web sensors uh, that we have uh, uh, as data collections. Uh, we process more than 2 billion daily events of uh, content consumption. Uh, that goes into a uh, raw data store. And from there, we look at the documents and try to understand, figure out what each one of those documents is actually talking about. Uh, and for that, we have a topics database that contains thousands and thousands of different semantic uh, topics. Um, and those uh, topics get scored against each document. Now, those topics can be very, very fine-grained. For example, they can be about Rockwell industrial automation, or they can be about uh, sales uh, planning technology, or about uh, deep learning, or about uh, IoT in industry, uh, industrial uh, uh, applications. Uh, and we have many thousands of those. Um, so the, the key challenge here is how to efficiently create, maintain, and expand uh, this uh, topic database. Um, now, those topics are basically defined by looking at examples of uh, uh, text on the web that talks about each one of those topics. So what we need to do that is basically see different pages that define that topic, talk about it, and extract meaningful uh, uh, semantic topics from that. Um, and then once we have those semantic topics, we can take any unknown page, use some distance metric, for example, a cosine distance, and see how similar that page is to the pages that we trained on. Um, then we can use that information to track things like intent and company uh, and, and create other uh, insights that we use in our machine learning. Um, so as an example, if you look at uh, this uh, company's website, uh, Freedom Solar Power, uh, and you use our topic classifiers, you would not surprisingly find that they talk about energy and energy efficiency and smart grid, uh, solar panels, sustainable energy, uh, uh, renewable energy, and so on, right? So this makes sense in the context of this uh, company. Um, you can take this and actually use it to find other companies where we found similar topics discussed. So you would find companies like the ones you see here, and I think you'd agree that these seem like they do a very similar thing. So for example, if we just had a salesperson close a deal with uh, Freedom Solar Power, we may actually want to send that same salesperson to talk with these other uh, uh, companies out there because they may actually have a very similar need. Or if we're looking at suppliers uh, uh, for uh, supply planning, uh, we may actually want to look at other companies that may be providing a very similar solution so that we can expand our supplier uh, network. Um, so those are just two examples of things you can do with this type of information. Now, the problem, like we heard here in multiple talks, is tagging, right? Uh, that's, a, that's a pain across the uh, industry. You need relatively large number of tagged uh, data in order to train those machines, machines effectively. Um, for each one of the topics, you would need to create multiple pages that are known to contain the uh, uh, sample uh, data. Uh, you need to do that manually. 
Um, and that's an expensive operation to run, especially when you need thousands and thousands of those uh, uh, very fine grain and very specific uh, uh, topics uh, defined. Uh, so what we would like to do, and what I'll discuss in this talk, is how did we uh, reduce significantly the amount of manual labor needed to create those tags and uh, uh, almost fully automate uh, the process of this uh, tagging so that it's more like a QA process rather than a uh, search and, and uh, deep analysis type of uh, process. Um, so the way we do it is by basically looking at uh, language models. Now, we heard again today in multiple talks about how uh, uh, language models are uh, specific to the domain and to the genre uh, that they came from. Uh, the data that Anaplan sources all comes from different web data sources. So there are uh, commonalities in that uh, data set, and we can see repeating patterns in different documents that came from the same source. Uh, so we use that to our advantage, uh, and we can actually train effective models on that specific uh, uh, data source. Um, the, uh, 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 basically, the, the process that we go through is we look for uh, data on a specific topic. So let's say we're now looking for industrial automation. So our name is industrial automation. We have a description of what industrial automation means. So it's machines that connect to IoT sensors that uh, look at uh, 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 the process running inside the factory and it's able to do uh, uh, various things on that uh, data and, and so on and so forth. Um, and that text and that description actually can now go into our language model and find other relevant uh, uh, sentences and other relevant terms that are related to that specific topic. And then once we have those additional relevant terms and, and sentences, we can actually add them to the topic vectors that define this industrial automation uh, topic. Um, so that way, by just feeding in those very few sentences and, and a high-level name, we can actually expand that to be almost a full semantic topic. Uh, we also use uh, uh, web searches uh, of those results as well. So if we identify that a specific uh, uh, term is related to another term, we can actually combine results we get from both of these, uh, uh, from both of these terms in our uh, uh, document universe. And then we can train our machine using additional documents that we uncovered ourselves automatically from the term that uh, was provided. Um, so to do this effectively, what we use is uh, Word2Vec, which is the deep learning method to uh, uh, find uh, context uh, around a word. Uh, basically, the way Word2Vec works is by looking at words and the words around them, which are the context, and inferring either the context from the words or the word from the context. Um, and it has many different cool uh, uh, properties, like, for example, uh, uh, different terms that are related in the same way have similar vector distances, like king to a queen is like man is to a woman, uh, or Turkey to Ankara, like uh, uh, Russia to Moscow. Um, and it also works pretty well across different languages if it's trained correctly. And uh, it's able also to deduce not just words, but also uh, terms that are uh, related to a word. Um, Doing uh, uh, this kind of work, there's a lot of very good uh, resources today uh, in the community that allow you to train those models yourself. Uh, two examples here are PyTorch and Gensum, uh, which we use. Uh, and what we learned actually is that doing this training yourself has huge benefits uh, over using uh, pre-canned, uh, trained uh, uh, corpora. corpora. Uh, for example, there's a Google one that is basically everything on the web. Uh, that tends to be less domain-specific and less uh, relevant for applications that have a specific type of uh, documents like we do. So doing the work of uh, training it yourself is a worthwhile effort, and it's, as you can see, it's not very uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, to do it. Um, and once you've done that, now the next thing is looking at uh, what kind of inference your model can suggest. Uh, so if you look at a word, for example, like AI, um, you would find that artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, uh, big data, uh, and others are things that actually are suggested uh, by the model. If you look at ABM, ABM is actually an acronym that has many different meanings, uh, but the, the area where we 
uh, apply it is actually in account-based marketing, which is a marketing term. Um, so if you look here, you would see that actually the ABM that we found in our uh, trained models is actually related to the right kind of ABM and not to the ABM services company, for example, you would see outside uh, airplanes uh, uh, if you uh, look at the people uh, working around it. Um, so that's a, that's a good uh, uh, indication that uh, we can uh, apply this type of learning. Um, there's different ways to train those models and they have many different parameters. So you can look at different window sizes, meaning different number of words around the word that you're looking for context. You can predict either from the center to the words around it or from the words around to the center. Um, and you can also uh, decide how you sample uh, uh, very popular words. Uh, so you can undersample in them in, in uh, different uh, uh, ways. Um, and each one of those different configurations basically give you a little bit of a different uh, angle to look at what does context mean actually in a language. Um, so if you look at different uh, ways to train such models, uh, let's look at, for example, the word health. Uh, if we look for health, uh, we can train it with uh, different window sizes on the uh, context to center or center to context with a different window size. And you start to see different uh, patterns emerge. So column one is one configuration, column two is a different one, column three is a third one. And uh, when you look at the words that we see here, actually column one are basically, uh, what we find there are mostly words that look like synonyms. So they have the same meaning basically as uh, uh, the term that we're looking for. Uh, column two uh, looks more like actions or activities related to that word, right? So health, uh, there is wellness and disease and well-being and, and in data security, you would find things like enforcement or uh, uh, rule. Um, and column three, actually you find more like things uh, like technologies or like solutions. Uh, so we're able to find re related to health, you're able to find uh, telemedicine and e-health. Um, and under data security, you would find logon and uh, data retention. Uh, so it seems like you can also get, with different configurations of this, you can also get a much richer uh, uh, set of uh, uh, terms to look for than by just using one. Um, another set of examples here, uh, under ABM, you would find, again, the ABM is the right type of ABM for us, so it's the account-based marketing one. Uh, you would find uh, different uh, uh, synonyms for ABM under column one. You would find different uh, activities that use ABM like demand generation or marketing automation or lead nurturing. And you would uh, find different solutions like Bombora or demand base, uh, uh, intent data. Uh, so you'd find these under uh, the column three and, and the same applies to uh, database. Um, so this is basically how we uh, conduct the process. Um, the first thing that we do is we use only the topic names, right? So we take the topic names and the topic descriptions, run them through this uh, uh, sophisticated machine that uh, uh, uses the uh, deep learning to extract more meaningful uh, terms from that. Um, next thing that we do is we use uh, uh, classifiers to train using that additional data that we brought uh, 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 to find the topics. And then uh, um, we automatically select the texts that are what we call the canonical texts that contain those different terms uh, that are the expanded uh, terms. Um, and from that, we can then build the uh, detection logic that detects it in any uh, URL. And now we have a fully automated uh, process that basically runs end to end. So it starts with a basic set of uh, very short text describing the topic we'd like to uh, track. And at the bottom, what we have is actually a fully automated uh, flow that creates a uh, uh, classification of billions of uh, web pages to be able to say uh, uh, every day, what topics are interesting for a specific company. Now, the way we put this information to use is by creating that type of uh, uh, 
flexibility and that type of agility in creating our topics, we can actually now be much more agile in serving customer needs, right? So uh, having this type of capability allows us to source very, very specific and fine-grained data and augment customers' data with it. Um, so the way the, the machine learning works in the next layer is basically every time we connect to a customer data set, um, we take the customer's data set, add all of this rich data that we sourced about what technologies are being used in the, uh, that company, about uh, uh, the uh, uh, hiring trends in the, in the company, about the uh, different uh, project interests that we see emanating from it. And we have a very rich data that we can now train additional classifiers on. Um, as an example, uh, some of Anaplan's customers are companies like HP or like uh, uh, United Airlines, uh, Box, and, and many others. Uh, and the uh, purposes that we help them solve are things like planning for the best uh, sales uh, pipeline. Uh, so if you have a sales plan that you need to put together for the next year, what you'd like to know is which companies actually have interest in your uh, different products. Um, the way to do it is to look at who did you close in the last year, uh, take that from the existing CRM, append all of this rich data that we just discussed, so that now, uh, instead of very lean data about, you know, we close company A and company B, and, and that's the salesperson who did it, and they're in the uh, aerospace industry, now we know everything about uh, interest topics from that company, about uh, uh, what products do they have, what do they sell, what kind of people work there, what kind of technologies are they using, and that very rich data set becomes a data set that we can actually train machines on, so that we can now compare and contrast the, uh, 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 um, uh, the, the closed one records from everything else in their database, and we're now able to score and predict who are going to be the next companies uh, they'll be uh, selling to. Um, that creates a lot of very, very interesting challenges, right? So the first thing is the sheer amount of data uh, that we process is a huge challenge. And uh, uh, we have billions and billions of daily events that we need to uh, uh, support in our data collection. And we have hundreds of millions of uh, records coming in from customers. Um, all of those need to be scored, appended, enriched uh, uh, in uh, close to uh, uh, real-time uh, operation. Uh, so the machines are very, very uh, uh, complex. Uh, and the second is that we need to keep uh, transitioning our models and keep uh, adjusting them to things as they change in the market. Uh, so we need to add new types of uh, indicators all the time, which is where this comes into play and we're able to expand our uh, attributes uh, uh, framework. We also need to support uh, uh, additional algorithms as AI becomes a much bigger player in uh, the planning space in, uh, in companies, right? So uh, companies are shifting from doing all of their plans on Excel sheets to doing them online in tools like Anaplan, and that requires an additional uh, layer of intelligence that uh, will make that planning much more robust and much more accurate. Um, and that's the key challenge that we have. It's uh, basically converting uh, AI to be uh, uh, a virtual employee in the uh, planning uh, department in each one of our customers. Um, so to conclude this, um, if you'd like to uh, try out this engine, uh, there's a, a, a cool question that, that we have here. You can also find it, whoops. You can also find it on, come on. You can also find it on uh, cards uh, on our uh, booth. You're welcome to come and talk to us. And if you have any other uh, uh, questions, we're happy to answer. Um, and this will allow you to actually uh, check out Anaplan, write uh, what uh, we do, and get a score. And if you score above 75, uh, there will be two prizes uh, raffled uh, later today at your booth. So. Thank you, and uh, come see us. <laughs>